probably are. You ready? You ready? All right. Let's get let's get started. Let's, uh, glad to have everybody out on on tonight. This evening it's a little chilly, but uh, I know that don't bother y'all. As long as it's not raining. If it's raining, then that's something else altogether different. I know. <coughs> Is that somebody else coming in and going out? Going out. All right, we'll wait for wait on Miss Davis. <coughs> Thankful and delighted uh, that you would allow us to to be out uh, on tonight and to be here and that you are in our presence we thank you for your your word we thank you for um, your your work your, your move and and your will and so god we we're praying as as always that for a deeper understanding of your word that we might apply it to our to our lives and be led by it each and each and every day uh, that we become more like you in our in our walk, in our talk, in our being, and we'll be careful to give you uh, the honor and the glory. In your Son Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 And so, uh, how many of you studied your Sunday school lesson? I know we've got some teachers here that uh, just finished uh, going over the the, the the Sunday school lesson, and what a good lesson it is. Uh, the, the, the deals and highlights uh, love and honor and, and respect uh, the relationship between um, you know Ruth and Naomi and uh, but what I thought would would, would, would be good and uh, highlight and even elevate uh, the lesson is to is to, to sort of go into the, to the background just uh, just a little bit. And so I didn't know what else to call it except trouble in, in Moab. Trouble, uh, trouble will make you do some things, won't it? Circumstances and situations, and you know, whether you learn how to face them will cause you to succumb and will cause you to make decisions uh, that you may later regret. And so I, I start with the uh, first through the fifth of verses, uh, first chapter of Ruth. And uh, it begins, says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. It highlights two things, uh, that when the judges ruled, and there, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. So this certain man of, of, of Bethlehem, Judah, um, decides because there's a, a famine in the land, trouble, he, he, makes, he makes a decision. He, he, he decides that he's going to do what's best in his belief for his family. In other words, this, this man of God decides that he's going to take matters into his own hand. That this famine, without understanding why, what, or whatever, uh, that I'm going to decide to do something. Anybody ever did that? That, that? Man, things are tight, and I, need, and I need to do something. I can't rely on no, nobody else, irrespective of the God you serve. He who you trust and, and declare that you, you're leaning on. You pray, and you call him a provider, and you call him a sustainer. And he's a deliverer, and he's a restorer. And then the first time 
Trouble comes, you take off. Famine, a, a, a dry place, uh, absence of any kind of growth, stagnation in your life, that, and you decide that, man, I got to do something. I, I, I got to, to do something. And it says, in the days when judges rule, uh, judges the 21st chapter and the 22nd verses, in those days, there was no king in Israel. The judges ruled, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, you know that sounds like trouble right there. It, time of turbulence, social turmoil, absence of law, idolatry, theft, drunkenness, homosexuality, sexual perversion, violence, national division, war, extreme unbelief. Somebody tells me what that sounds like. Sounds like the day too, doesn't it? Sounds sound like like the day too. We we've got a little bit of that. Well, every man decides what's right for himself, and he makes the decision, and whatever happens, happens. And think about it. When 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 men decide to do what's right in their own eyes, how can you have anything else? But confusion. I mean, I, I'm gonna do what's right. I'm gonna do what I. I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm gonna be willing to admit that you you've you've been close to that. You, <laughs> you said close to that. You know, I, I know what they say, but I know what I'm gonna do. And so, the thing about this famine, you know, and, and we 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 gloss over famines in, in, the, in these days and times, but in the Old Testament, uh, when people strayed from God, he, he had a way of reaching out to them. In other words, calling them back to himself. And that would be under this heading of famine. Get, let, me get your, let me get your attention. Famine, famine. Uh, second Chronicles, the second chapter, the 13th verse. He says, if I shut up he heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. E e e famine, famine. No rain, dry, nothing grown. Locusts, you may have something. You may have your money, might be filled with, with, with your pocket may be filled with money, but you can't hold on to it. Or, or, or sickness that you can't understand, can't, can't get well no matter how hard you try. When God causes a famine or allows there to be a famine, sometimes he, it's not to drive you away, but it's to bring you closer to him. Think about how often do we sit down and really take note of what's going on around us. Sometimes we ask the question, Lord, why am I going through so much? Why is, why is there so much calamity? Why? Ah, could God be trying to get your attention? Go to that 14th verse, um, Second uh, Chronicles 7 chapter. He says, okay, now I'm going to do all this, but because I'm trying to get your attention. And he says, if my people who which are called by my name, and y'all hold on to that, called by my name, shall humble themselves, react, react to what I'm doing, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. You know, it's important how you respond uh, to your own personal, individual famine experience. It's important. Because um, you can uh, cause it to continue. Or you can cause it to, to, that to be a, a change. Sometimes it's, it's, God, I surrender. I totally surrender. I, I don't want to stay here. I know I made some wrong decisions in life, but I surrender and I'm ready to start 
from ground zero. I humble myself. I put my pride in my pocket. I stand up to the mistakes that I have made. Please forgive me of my sin. Yeah, yeah, you, you hit rock bottom. There ain't even one way. Ain't 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 one way. And you know what? Some people still won't do it. <laughs> he, he, some people still won't do it. The second verse in in, in today lesson, tonight's lesson, and the name of the man was, you know, it said it was a certain man, and the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, uh, Malan and Chilion, uh, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Names, names, names. Names important. Uh, Bethlehem means house of bread, and Judah means praise. So he... he there's a famine situation, difficulty. He moves from the house of bread in the place where praise occurs. His name means my God is king. And he would say probably that the reason I left because this house of bread isn't working out right. And, and I don't have any reason to praise him because of my circumstances, my situation. But how can he plain, complain because he's not living up to his name? His name, it says, my God is king. And if he's living up to his name, then he, he would be sure that God would, would not forsake him or, or leave him. Name, name. So, what's our name? We're Christians. Christ-like. Are we living up to our name? What's our response when famine occurs in our life? What happens when things don't go right at church? Some folks take off. Those folks over there are crazy. Uh-uh. You know, it's, I, I feel led to, to go somewhere else. I always worry when somebody says they feel led, okay, to, to leave a place where they're uh, blessed, to walk out from the umbrella of blessing uh, because somebody stepped on their on they toes and find out that the place where they went used to be good until they got there. What happens when our finances get turned upside down? I mean, we, we look for avenues in the a, in a right way out of it, sometimes without thinking about how do we get into trouble in the first place? Because that might be the first place to start or when our relationships go south. We run out on God by taking our matters into our own hands. Because we say we rely on him, and we say we, we lean on him, but nevertheless, when, when the rubber hits the, the road, and it gets a little hot, and it gets a little heated, we take off. My God shall supply all my needs. Anybody ever said that? Uh, and then when we got a little need, what we do? Man, I need a second job. I need a third job. Vengeance is mine. Oh, yeah, but we, we got to be quick to tell somebody else. The Lord is my shepherd. I can take care of myself and take care of you too. And this last one, he sends us pastors for our edification and, and for our perfection. And then when the pastor preaches on giving and tithes, what y'all do? 
I had never seen the church empty out so fast. Not only did, did Elimelech take matters into his own hand by leaving a place where he shouldn't have left, but he made a mistake by where he went. He compounded his bad decision by going to Moab. To leave Israel and go to Moab was being in disobedience to the commandment of the Lord. Going to, to Moab was just like a slap in the face, face of his own faith. It, he, it, it was turning away from God and turn into the world. Sometimes we make decisions that, that fly in the face of everything that we've been taught, everything that we confess, that we believe in, because of fire getting just a little hot. Joshua 23rd chapter 11th and the 12th verse, why not Moab? It, God, take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Okay, because if you love God, you'll keep his commandments, right? Because else, if you do in any wise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, the Moabites, even these that remain among you and shall make marriage with them and go in unto them and they to you. He's telling you, he's, he's getting ready to say what's gonna, what's gonna happen if you go to Moab, if you, if you go against his commandments. The 13 verse says, know for a certainty. Man, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. In other words, know for certainty, if you go to Moab, you're going to be on your own. Not only that, but they shall be snares and traps unto you. They're going to be your worst enemy and scourges in your side and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. I'm going to tell you what. I don't think I'd go to Moab. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you, when you say for a certain day, for a certain day, the Lord your God, here's what's going to happen if you go to Moab. And when you go to a place, uh, and not just a physical place, but when you allow yourself to, 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 to get into a situation, or allow someone to take you to a situation or to a, a place, don't you know that that affects your worship? Some, it, you, it, it affects your worship. Now, in Moab, he's in Moab. His family's in Moab. you in Moab, you can't worship at the temple. You know, temple in Moab. You, you can't bring your tithes and offerings to the temple in Moab. They're not celebrating the days that you ought to celebrate. And so everything that you're familiar with, everything that they were familiar with that had to do with God, they were separated from. And so when you separate yourself from the things of God, guess what happens? You grow cold. You grow cold. Cold. And so by the decision that he made, and sometimes we make decisions with the thought that it's just us. But how many you know to realize that when you make decisions, there are other folks that affect it too? It's not just you. There are other folks affected. And so he exposed them, he exposed his family to evil. That, that, that would have been avoided if he just stayed in Israel. And I know when 
there was a time when we were looking to, to, to move in and relocate. And, you know, sometimes when you're looking to move and relocate and, and you listen, you're listening to the, the real estate agents and they say, don't worry about the kids. The, the kids will adjust. Don't be fooled by that. Okay. <laughs> don't be fooled by that. Uh, that. That's not necessarily true. And you can make a, 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 a good situation really bad. I remember we were looking, my daughter, she would, I don't know how she knew, but she knew her bus didn't go in the area we were looking in, and she wouldn't even get out and go look at the house. She said, my bus don't come over here. <laughs> so, well, so much for, for buying a house in this neighborhood. Okay, we need to, we need to look in other, other places. Think about uh, during, the, during the COVID-19, the, the, right in the midst of it, and, and uh, we had some instances where uh, parents decided that they would keep their children home, that they would not allow their children to come and be in the midst of the saints, and how their decision had such a negative impact on those on those kids, and you couldn't have you couldn't have convinced them that one that it wasn't their decision to make, and two that it wasn't a good that it wasn't a good decision. In their view, they were looking out for the the welfare, but it was a decision that took them away from the presence of God, and that's not good. Second Corinthians six chapter fourteen verse says, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with 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 darkness? When you move away from God, you, you moving into to dangerous territory, and you 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 moving into a territory or a place where you shouldn't be, and there's no way to 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 mix those things together, and, and something has to happen. Something has to happen, and it's normally like it's going to be a bad thing. Third verse says, "And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons." He makes the decision. He makes the decision. Me and my family, we moving. Y'all get your stuff packed up. We gone. And he dies. Fourth and the fifth verse. Here's what the kids did. The boys did. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. What did God word said? Don't marry. And the name of one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. And uh, Milan and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her two husbands. She went alone. We're going to something bigger, something better, because there's a little famine over here. There's a little trouble over here. And you get to where you think ought to be something good and something better, and things start dying. It's, it's, I say it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous to walk out from the umbrella of God's protection to take matters in our own hands. Extremely dangerous. And we can't say and look at a person's life and, 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 and point out to, to negative things that might be happening and say that's because of the decision that they made. Okay? We, can't, we, we cannot do that. We can, we can surmise 
we can so surmise. I, I had an instance where someone said, um, Pastor, uh, you know, I, things have been tight and I have not been able to go on vacation and do, do things I wanted to do. And, and I've got this opportunity to just drop out of the sky. And, uh, but it's going to require me uh, to miss some Sundays. And sometimes I'm probably respond too quick. Sometimes probably I ought to think about it, you know, before I open my mouth. And I was like, well, that's dumb. Uh, what, what, you don't want to make that kind of decision that takes you away from church. You don't want to do that. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a personal thing, you know, for me. I mean, it, uh, I'm thinking about you. Don't walk out from the umbrella of his protection. Be careful of, about that decision that you make. I hate it when these, these, these uh, commercial entities trick our young people by giving them the title of manager and no money and, and fool them into working on, on Sundays. I hate it. When you walk away from the things of the Lord, there's no way you can possibly serve the Lord like you should. No way. I know sometimes people say that, you know what, I, I watch on Facebook, it's the same thing. It ain't the same thing. I dare somebody to watch a fire, fireplace on TV and get warm. It ain't happening. You can rub your hands in front of that TV all you want to. You ain't gonna get warm. When his house, his word, his work, and his worship and his will are not priorities in your life, it doesn't matter what you say. Your life says that you're away from the Lord. And what do people look at? They look at your life, not necessarily what you say. Somebody is watching always when you make decisions that satisfy the flesh that hinders or, or affects the working of God, the worship of God, then he's not the priority in your life. And not only does, he, does that negatively affect you, it negatively affects others. You can go back to that uh, second verse. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons was Milan and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab, and they didn't just visit. They continued there. And as they continued there, things began to change. The word continued means to exist or to become. Light and darkness, they, they don't, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. There's going to be a dimming of something. You know, you, you can't have one light switch in a room and half of the room be light and half of the room be dark. Something's going to happen. You might have it on a you might have it on a dimmer, but something's going to happen. That's going to be a, that's going to be a change. And they continued there, meaning that that not only did they go to, to Moab, but Moab got into them. Fourth verse, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. And the name of one was Orpah, and in the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there for 10 years. 10 years. 
I know sometimes we don't we don't want to ad admit it or even think about it, but m most of the times when there's a crisis in our lives, if you start to peel back the onion, there's a bad decision or irresponsible behavior somewhere, somewhere. I, man, I'm broke. I'm a little short. Think about all the stuff you bought that you didn't need. What, what if, what if you, what if you had, what if you had that money? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sick and I don't feel. Think about the stuff you ate, or the time when you should have gone to the doctor, but you didn't go to the doctor, and you wouldn't go to the doctor, and now you're hurting, suffering, and everybody else is hurting and, and, and suffering along with you. When we make bad decisions or act irresponsibly, we create a crisis for not just ourselves, but other people. Think about it. He died. He took them there. He's the breadwinner. He died. Now what, am, what are we supposed to do? Famine in the land, and I act irresponsibly, and I make a decision that not only affects me, but it, it affects others. Can anybody think of any, 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 any famines other than corn not coming up? Let's go through some. Someone gets offended at church. We call that a spiritual famine. And what happens, man, to make a decision that here's a person that's been active and faithful, and because they get offended, they leave and they go somewhere else. And how many times will you uh, can go from one spot to another and take your same level of responsibilities from the old place to the new place. It doesn't, that normally doesn't happen, right? You go from one place to the next place and, and, and you're gonna have to sit. You're gonna sit, you're gonna, you're gonna have to sit a while and you lose your edge, you lose your desire, sometimes you lose your will. Maybe you just felt overburdened. You just think, I know, it's Sunday morning, it's uh, Sunday school, it's Bible class. Man, it seems like I'm always, well, I'm always, I need to take a, I need to take a break. I need to take a day off. I need to take a night off. Don't you have to be careful? Because what happens? One, one will turn to two, and two will turn to the three, and then before you know it, you'll be trying to get warm watching TV. Famine. Make a decision that's irresponsible. Maybe a, a financial need arose in, in, in your life. And instead of considering that, that maybe God sent this thing, allowed this thing to happen to you, for you to really take a look at how well you are being a steward of what he's blessed you with. So in, instead of recorrecting or, or redirecting, you took matters into your own hand and you say, man, I need another job. And you go out and get another job. And before you know it, you've got some responsibilities that's taking you south instead of north and east and, and instead of west and you're in trouble and you don't know how to get out of it. And then maybe you started, maybe you allowed some things to, to creep into your life that, that you, you thought, man, that's something I would, I would never do. But you slip and you, you, you get started with it. 
and then you convince yourself that it's okay. A little bit ain't gonna hurt. Ain't gonna hurt no. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. And and beside that, what I do is my business. You know, you start convincing yourself that your bad decision is 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 uh, okay. And and before you know it, people don't know who you are, and you don't know who you who who you are. You, you ever talk to somebody and you say, "Man, where you been?" And they don't want to tell you. They just want to say, well, I'm here. I'm, I'm here right now. Yeah, but where you been? They ain't going to tell you where they been. I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. You remember that was, that was a time when, when, when people were away and they came back. They, they felt an obligation to come down and say, I'm recommitting, recommitting myself, renewing my, my membership. They don't do that these days. They just slide in. Like they like, and they grin at you like like everything. You ought to be glad to see me. Where you been? Where you where you wait? Where, where you been? I asked somebody that Sunday. Where you, where you where you been? I'm here. Yeah, but where you been? They never did tell me where they where they been. Don't say because because you old, uh, and and so. You made some mistakes, and obviously you're gonna keep making some mistakes. But you got a little one, you got a young one that that's that's uh, that I'm looking for, and that I'm attached to. And when you're not here, they not here. Where you been? We gonna do better. They ain't gonna never tell me where you been. <laughs> now. Their trip to Moab was an actual move. And it doesn't have to be an actual move per se. Uh, because we can go into a uh, Moab type of uh, uh, aura uh, without ever moving. Okay? Because there are some folk, as I say, who attend church regularly, pay tithes live clean, moral lives, dress real nice, but they in Moab. How you know they in Moab? Because they got bad attitude. Anybody know anybody with bad attitude? Don't y'all look at nobody. Don't just keep looking at me. Bad attitude in Moab. Folks who become critical about everything. In Moab. Oh, they, everybody at wrong. Find fault with everything. But no fault of their own. Can't, can't see their own faults. They're in, in Moab. Can you, be in, can you be in church and be in Moab? Most definitely. And you know, he didn't just decide. All of a sudden, come home on a Wednesday and say Thursday morning, let's head out of here. It begins to, it happens. It happens slowly. That second verse says, and the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name, I remember I told you, name means something. And, and the name of his two sons, Milan and Chilion, uh, Milan means sit. Chilion means pining or wasting away. God might be trying to get their attention before he moved. Trying to get your, get your attention that, that, that that's not what you want to do. You Believe you me, uh, when you think back on some of the, the, the worst decisions you've ever made in your life, there was a hint that this ain't going to go, yeah, this ain't going to go right. But you can convince yourself, you can convince yourself, you said, I prayed about it. <laughs> you, didn't get, you didn't get no answer. I, I prayed about it. There's a hint that this thing 
he ain't going ain't going to go right ain't going to go right you you sometimes the car won't start you get a ride to go anyway <laughs> that was your hint don't go <laughs> stay at home you don't need you don't need to go but no no i'm i'm i got i i, I got to go and i got dressed I got, I got, I, I got to go and get there. And like, oh, I should have stayed at home. <laughs> I, I should have stayed at home. But when the spirit is, is, is that is not like him, one of those Moab spirits, begins to take root in your life. God knows. And he, he wants to call you back to him. And so he begins by speaking to your heart. As, as a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is, so is he. And so he pricks your heart. And don't you know that he loves you so? That he'll do whatever it takes to bring you home again. He'll do whatever it takes. Now, sometimes that can be harsh. It can be harsh. But sometimes that's what it takes for some of us. So, sometimes the stub and the toe won't do it. Mm-mm, stub and the toe won't do it. He got to take our whole leg off. Because we're going to, we get our mind made up, we're going to go and we're going to do, and this is right, and I'm going to make this work, hook or crook. God knows how to discipline your life. But sometimes we take it, this is my lot, this, this is my lot in life. No, that's not, not your lot, lot in life. He loves you, he loves you too much. He loves you too much. But if you, if you repent, and he'll he'll open the door, and he'll he'll take you he'll take you back take take you back home. So he's faithful and just. Sixth verse says, "Then she arose. She considered everything that's happening. This 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 woman of praise. She takes note of everything that's that's happening." And she takes inventory of where I am in a place where I have no business being. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Why did they leave in the first place? It was a family. Couldn't wait. Got to, got to, we got to go, got to go, got to go. Now God visited. He, he promised he'd never leave us or forsake us. What, what, what is he say? I, I, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I was see begging for, for, for bread. He'll, he'll do just what he said he, he'll do. And the one says, she arose. That 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 that's not like she got up out of her seat or, or swung her legs off her her bed. She arose. Something wakened in her heart. Something wakened in in her mind. And when there is a change in your heart, guess what happens when there's a change in your heart? There's a change in your behavior. There's a change in in your your actions. And what did she do? She repented. And she went home. She went home. And you know what she had to do? She had to, she had to humble herself. She couldn't, she couldn't just make ex ex excuses and say, don't blame it on me. Blame it on my husband. I was just, I was just following my husband. No, she confessed her part in it. Remember, you were there 10 years. Okay, it was only after she came to her senses 
And, and for some of us, uh, we say we walk by faith and not by sight. But when did she arise? When she heard there was some bread. Okay. But, but God was faithful and that he gave her an opportunity. A time, to, a, a time and a chance to come, come to her to herself. And, 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 and prayerfully, we, we, we get that, that chance after we've made some wayward and, and goofy uh, decisions. Anybody ever said that, that if I had a quarter, if I had a dollar for every time I, I, <laughs> I, I, I did something or I spent some money on on something, man, if I had that money, oh my goodness. I, I, one I con the one I confess, not that I made a whole lot of bad decisions, but one I confess is is buying albums. Albums. I lived in Atlanta and there was a store uh, called Peace Tree something. Right on Peace Street too, and man, I get my check. Man, I had to have the album. I had to have the album. I had so many albums, I ain't had no place to put them. In 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 five ninety nine, might have been two songs on the album that were worth anything. Man, I was I thought, if I had the money that I spent on those albums, you know. You, it, who has albums today? They they coming back. I mean, they coming back. But man, but if I if I had if I had that money, and you know the bad thing about it was then you can't drive a car and play an album. <laughs> they had no album player in the car. <laughs> so now what you got to do, right? You got to figure out a way to record the the album. On a cassette or or eight track to, to play in your in your car, you know. And I had an old car that didn't have a cassette player or eight track, and so I had to buy one and help somebody to help install it, and didn't have no place to put it, so it was underneath my seat. Don't y'all laugh? So I, I'm driving a big Deuce and Quarter with an eight track player underneath my seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kick it and then skip. <laughs> but if I had, if I had that money and would have been able to invest that money, oh man. Everybody got something like that you you could just think about if I if I if I and I came and I thank God for bringing me to my my senses so I could could do better uh, and I realized that, 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 that the best decision I can make we ever made is just to lean on him and trust in him and that he's going to bring everything to pass and then when I'm going through those tough times Lord please help me learn Open my eyes so that I can, I, I'm not fixed. Sometimes we don't figure it out. Sometimes we cannot figure it out. Help me, help me to know, understand what it is, what it is I'm supposed to do. What am I supposed to look at? Uh, is it, help me to understand. Help me to understand. Here's, here's, here's uh, something that, that's, that's uh, then I'm going to let you go. That, uh, God loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. And how do we give? We give our time, our talent, and our treasure. And oftentimes we think uh, we attach the cheerful part to the giving of our treasure. And we're in a season of, of thanksgiving and giving. Reconsider and think about cheerful giving with respect to our 
time and our talent. It's too easy for us to be begrudgingly be a giver of our time and our talent. We we frown and 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 we give off the airs that I'm doing it, but I really don't want to do it. Okay, and folk are watching you. Okay, folk, folk, folk are, are, are watching you. And I'm not talking about just putting a smile on your face, because God can see through your smile. Okay, He looked right in your heart, and He knows He knows you're fighting and and and, and putting up a putting up a fuss. And so you 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 need to. Shake yourself and, and check yourself. I've got the responsibility. This is just me now. I'm just talking about me. I got the responsibility of feeding his sheep, of, 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 of giving. And he expects me to do that. How? Cheerfully. 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 And knowing that, 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 He's the reward, and he's going to make everything come out all, all right. And I just got to be, be, I got to be cheerful, cheerful about it. Amen. Any comments, questions? Anybody want to volunteer what their advice was? Nobody want to volunteer Well, all right then. We'll we'll stand and be dismissed then. Yes, sir. If you give yourself to the Lord, you're not your own. You belong to no other than yourself. You need to be mine. If you say it's your mind, then you don't want to do it. Don't say you get to come out of the situation. You know it when you when you belong to it. Because if you need to be on my own, like What's, what's the best sermon that you can give? Your life. That your best sermon is your life. What, what do folk watch? Your, 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 your life. You, you, can, you can stand and, 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 and talk about it, but you, 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 gotta, you gotta live it. You got to live it. You, you live it. You live it. You live it. You live it. Every day when you get up, you got to, you, 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 you got to live it. Are there going to be some challenges throughout the day? Absolutely. Because you know one person who's always on his job? He always on his job. He ain't going to take no lunch break. He ain't going to take no, no, no nap. He, nothing like the 24-7, he on his job trying to figure out ways to, to, to dig a ditch so that you fall into. You can count on it. You can count on it. Come on, let's stand. Heavenly Father, we, again, we just thank you for your, your presence and we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for these that are, that are out tonight and, and, and those that have uh, called in and those that are, are, are witnessing on, on, on um, 
Facebook. And God, we, we, we pray that your word is, has, has caused uh, someone to, to reflect, not deflect, but to reflect upon themselves and, and within themselves to a point of, of, of challenging themselves that, that, uh, that they might declare that, that, that I'm not going to stay in Moab. That, that I'm going back to to the house of worship, to the house of house of praise. That, that I'm going to get back to to where I know I I ought to be. God, we we thank you in this season for your Son Jesus Christ. God, thank you for for sending Him uh, that He would become that that real life example for us in the way that uh, we should live and to carry it ourselves. And so God, we pray now that you would bless your people, that you would wrap your arms around them, that you would keep them, that you would protect them, that you would sustain them, that you would lead them, and that you would guide them, and that you would heal them. God, praying that you would feel them now, God, with your Holy Spirit, God, from the from their toes to the, to the crown of, of the head, God, until the cup runneth over, God. God, allow them to, to, to really feel uh, your presence now in the, in the name of, of Jesus. Cause there to be a, a warmth. Cause there to be a hunger to, to know more of you, God. To want to be like you. A, a desire to, to, to walk in your ways. To talk in your ways. To live in, in your ways. And then, God, to, to be disciples, God willing and, and, and ready to, to witness uh, to a dying world that's looking for something, somebody, another way, another al alternative. God, put something within in your people to, to, to declare boldly that there is only one way. And Christ says that I am that way, the truth and the light. And that there is no other way to the Father but by me. God, put that into the, to the hearts of your people, that they would declare with confidence and, and with boldness that, that there is a way and that we serve a, a God who's, that if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, in this season and this time, God, we just said thank you. We just said thank you, God. And God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the, the, the glory. And in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.